Hello there, my name is Kurt Bogart and welcome to another video. In this video I will show you my editing workflow for this yawning picture of Casper for a new post on Instagram. In Lightroom I select the picture I want to use and I open the picture in Photoshop. The reason I first go into Photoshop is because Photoshop is in my opinion the best tool to use whenever there are parts of the picture that have to be changed or adapted. For example, changing or cleaning up the background or removing spots or blemishes in the picture. And this is the case in this picture. I always double check if the picture is sharp where I want it to be, being where I focused when taking the shot. I do this by zooming in. Zooming in on the focal point of the picture just to check and I want it to be tack sharp. I believe this is essential for having a great picture. And I see that the whiskers and the mouth of Casper, the moment he was yawning, are nice and sharp. So this will do very nicely. Before starting the editing in Photoshop, I want to make life more easy for myself. So when I take a look at this picture, I know it will be used in Instagram. And so I will first crop the picture to the right format, and to the composition that I want to use for this photograph. The Instagram preferred feed format is a square, as you know, so I will crop this picture to a one by one. And for this picture I want to focus on the mouth, nose and whiskers. Therefore, I believe they have to be on or close to an intersection of one of the thirds. Here I like to have both his ears included in the picture too. It is sometimes a little bit of trial and error to get it right, and this will do just fine for me. I can use this small crop because I've made the picture with a high enough resolution and by applying the crop first I can limit the editing work dramatically, as you can see. Things in the picture that require in my opinion some cleaning up are the bottom left side where the computer logo and a part of the box are visible. And maybe, but that will be harder, the top of the picture with the black border of the laptop. Okay, the first thing I always do before I start editing and making changes to a picture is duplicating the layer. And I will never make the changes on the initial layer. For this picture I add another blank layer to clean up the bottom left. I will use the clone stamp tool to select parts of the picture. And I will copy these parts of the picture and clone them on a blank layer above. This way the elements of the picture that I don't want to see will be cloned away here on the layer 1. I need to sample multiple times on the picture to get the right pixels selected. And after selecting the target layer again, I can continue cloning and as you can see the bottom left corner gets cleaned up completely. And this looks alright to me. Maybe some last improvements here and there. And whenever I have finished a part of the editing, I usually duplicate the layers involved and I merge them together. This new merged layer will then be the basis to continue the editing. So again I duplicate the basis and I have an extra layer to work on. Next step is the top part of the picture. Cleaning this up completely will be very hard to do, so here I have decided to make the top part picture, the brown background on the right, and the black border of the laptop to make it darker instead of removing them. To do this, I create a new layer and I make it completely black. This layer is on top of everything else, so I add a mask to the black layer, and by using the brush tool, I can select the areas that I want to reappear of the layers below and where I want the picture to be relatively darker. I do this by brushing at a low opacity percentage over the mask of the black layer. The idea here is to keep the top part of the picture relatively dark and let the underlying layers get through completely. This 
will steer the viewer's eye even more to the focal point of the picture being the nose, mouth and whiskers. Well, this looks great. Don't forget to make a save from time to time, you never know. And this ends the correcting of pixels in Photoshop. Time to finish up the lighting and colors in Lightroom. Because I have saved the edit in Photoshop, Lightroom will automatically add the TIFF file to the catalog and I can start editing right away. In the develop mode in Lightroom, I have a large amount of sliders available to tweak the picture to my liking. I always start sharpening the picture around 50 and by adding some noise reduction around 20, maybe to 30. After all, and this is something that I always check, this picture was shot indoors with an ISO of 1600. In the effects panel, I like to see the impact of the dehaze slider and maybe apply a little bit of dehazing. And most of the time, I use a small amount of vignetting to create even more attention to the center of the picture. The most important changes to color and light are done in the basic panel. So let's open this up. Here the sliders exposure, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks are trimmed to my liking. You really need to slide them up and down until they are exactly where you feel they should be. This isn't exact science and will be different for every picture, so it's trial and error also here again. I usually slide the highlights and the blacks a bit down and the shadows and the whites a bit up. With the vibrant slider we can add a little bit more color to the picture. And whenever I want to change only a certain part of the picture, I use the adjustment brush. After selecting the brush, I can adjust the sliders to my liking and apply these adjustments only where I paint with the brush on the picture. For this picture, I want to add some extra clarity to the focal point of my picture being the nose, the mouth and the whiskers. So that's what I do. Nice, that will do. The last check I make is the color temperature of my picture. My Instagram feed has a creamy color feel, so I want to make sure that every picture fits in very nicely. I can change the color temperature with this slider to where I want the picture to be. So I like the picture as it is now. This takes me to the final step. Importing and doing some final fine tuning in the Instagram app itself. After exporting the picture from Lightroom and making it available on my phone, I open the Instagram app and I select a picture from my picture feed to create a new post. I hardly use filters because I make all the required changes in Photoshop and Lightroom. But I will do some final fine tuning in the editing part of the application. Because I feel that a picture on a small smartphone screen may look and feel a little bit different than on a laptop screen. So in the edit I change the sliders again to my liking. Remember that people like bright and colorful pictures, but don't overdo it. When done here, I add the caption that I had prepared in my notes app and I copy them into the caption field.
Next, again in the Notes app, I select and copy the hashtags I am going to use for this post. This way I can paste the hashtags immediately after posting. I post them in the comment section of the new post, so they can be found right away. And the last thing I do, of course, is liking my own post and making a quick refresh to see that the picture has correctly been posted and is receiving new likes. And that's it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything that is coming soon. And real quick, let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this video and share it with someone you know who likes to make cat pictures too. If you are not yet subscribed, make sure to hit the round button so you can get more videos like this in the future. And if you want to watch another video, you can click on one of those. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.